Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First Story Entitled Parents Get Mad Because I Brought a PS5 Then Became Racist and Police Got Cold So I'm still laughing about this situation. It literally just happened today. I went to Walmart to get some meat and diapers and then went to check the gaming sections to see if they had a discount on some games I wanted. Notice they had the first PS5 I saw in a while since the launch on the cage there. I thought, oh, that's great. I already have one, but I could make some money flipping that or something like this. I called a Walmart associate that can open the cage and he got the unit and unlike other stuff in Walmart, you have to pay right there in the electronic section. You cannot go near the cashier near the door and pay. $549 paid. Got my receipt? And this is where I met Karen and her son. Right after I paid, I turned my cart and I saw this boy yelling, Oh my god, mom, the PS5! And pointing at me. The lady came and asked me where I found it. I told her it was in the PlayStation cage, but I believe it was the only one they had. We had this conversation. So you said this is the last unit? I believe so, ma'am. You can ask the Walmart guy there. He overheard and yelled, Nah, that was the last one. We just got two units. The kid shouts, But mom, it's been two years of you telling me you would give me a PS5. She tells me, So don't you want to give me yours? You're like 30. And my son will use it way more than you. Nah, I'm sorry, but I already paid for it. Good luck in your search, though. You did not pay for it. You're not even near the cashiers. Your people don't even play video games. Excuse me? My people what? What do you mean, my people? Mexicans. I know you guys. Your accent is horrible, by the way. At this moment, I thought I should put my phone because I knew where this was going. I've seen it on the internet many times, but I never expected that would happen in a small town in New Hampshire. I tell her, first of all, I am not Mexican. Secondly, we're done here. I paid for the unit and it's mine. You can throw a tantrum, but nothing will change. Good luck. Her spoiled child jumps on the ground and begins to kick the living hell of the floor. You're a piece of trash. My son needs this and I'm taking it. You're not even from here, send in word. Wow, this is new. Never heard that before, by the way. The dude from Walmart that helped me get the console from the cage is black. I think he thought she called him the N-word for some reason. But he started yelling at her like, Karen, get the hell out of here. Karen puts her hand on my PS5 and I instantly push her away. She started to yell that I assaulted her and people called the police. She kept saying that I was a sand N-word and calling me steroid user and some other stuff. I just moved away and waited for the cops to arrive. The cop who got there was Hispanic. I tell him what happened and show the receipt to the console that I purchased with my own credit card. The Walmart dude was a total king and was on my side the whole way. She got angry and called me sand in word one more time in front of the cops. And they just put her in cuffs. Asked if I wanted to press charges and I was like yes of course. Went back and tipped the Walmart dude $50 because he literally got my back completely and because I actually pushed the lady because a 6-2 dude dick could have been bad for me. And yeah, I pressed charges on her for trying to steal my own property that I have already paid for. Next story. Santa calls out entitled woman on her pull crap. Hi, I work in an aquarium and during the months of December, Santa visits and swims around the tank and talks to kids. It's an awesome thing, it's something different than the normal stuff around here. 
This event happened a week before Christmas 2019. So when Santa comes to the aquarium to swim with the sharks, he brings his elves with him to help talk to the children. I was one of these elves this year. My first year may be my only year because of this single woman. So we were doing our normal thing and I was on mic talking to kids and translating a child talk for Santa to hear. Keep in mind he's in a tank, we use special microphones and earpieces so everyone can communicate and it's projected in a room. In between children my manager comes up and explains that there is a young boy, he's mute and just wants a picture. I'm like, yeah, sure, anything. I was honestly just happy to be there. I'm making a buck more than my normal pay. So we get to the young boy. He's like nine. And just there as I directed him and his mom to scuba Santa. Mom takes the mic and talks to Santa. Hi Santa. This is my boy. He doesn't say much so. Is it okay if we just get a picture? Of course. And then he poses for the picture. I'm standing off to the side out of the way of the picture checking the time. As we had to get Santa a break. Air tanks only hold so much air. As I'm getting ready to call the dive team to get the new tank ready, there is a pop in my earpiece. I look up to the microphone and the boy is holding it. Mom steps back towards me and we all just watch. At this point, there was a small line forming, but we weren't worried about it. This was going to be the last child before the five minute break. Santa, hi. For Christmas, I want a truck, says a little boy. And the entire room goes silent and mom starts crying before looking and explaining that he hasn't spoken in over six months. So I let him ramble to Santa for a bit. Most of it was lost because it was rambling. But the boy was loving it. And no one in line seemed to mind. This really was a Christmas miracle of some sorts. Enter the entitled woman. She was in her 30s with her friends wanting a picture with Santa. Whatever, I didn't care. The boy finished his babble and went to say goodbye. This woman yells over the crowd. If he isn't going to say real words, get him off the mic. My other elf friend was going to confront her as I was mic'd in. And whatever I would say would have been everywhere. But before they could get to her, Santa's voice came over the speakers. Now the fun fact about this particular Santa is that he was no nonsense kind of guy. And in this instant, he became my best friend. He yelled at her, why don't you shut your bi hole? Now because he heard this means she said it loud enough for my mic to pick it up and projected across the room. She was so red, but stayed in line. And Santa finishes with the boy. And I start my signal to Santa to let him know that he needs to go up for a new tank. Santa, Mrs. Claus has some new cookies she wants you to try. Now folks, Santa will be back after a short milk and cookie break. I inform them. Normally people agree and it's no big deal. We play games with the kids, sing a couple songs and before you know it, Santa's back. But today this woman was not having it. Oh come on! You have a whole line here and he's just leaving. She complains. He'll be right back, I promise. And then I go into a song. And this woman threw a fit. Screaming, cursing us out, making a real scene. And I have left my mic on. But while the song was playing, it wasn't projecting her. But Santa could still hear her screaming. Eventually, he came back and finally went to her in line. I reluctantly let her go up. And I stepped out of the way for a picture after she told me that if I was anywhere near the picture, she would have my head. I had security on standby and they were ready to walk her out because I don't want that horse crap. Not in my aquarium. And the best thing ever happened. And then the best thing happened. Santa says, Now hold on here. Are you the woman that yelled at the little boy? She just sat there staring at him. I'll have you know that that makes you number one on my naughty list. We need to be compassionate and nice to others. My elves here are just doing what I have instructed them to do. And you are yelling at them. That is not in the spirit of the holidays. You need to apologize to everyone you have been mean to. 
and then go to the end of the line and wait again. Until that is done, I am not taking a picture with a naughty person. I was hyped. The woman who's a witch. She ended up storming away screaming for a manager. I believe she found one, but was escorted out with no picture. The boy got to meet Santa out of the tank and got a super special picture with him and all his elves. He's a regular at the aquarium and likes to show us new words he's learned. It's amazing. And that diver is my favorite dude forever and always. Next story. I help a local screen printing shop earn the reputation it deserves. Story happened a few years ago in 2015. The setup. I was a screen printer. I accepted a new job at a different shop for $13 an hour, slightly better wage than my old job. And the place was much nicer. Let's just call it Waldron Sports Center slash apparel. They operate out of a large space in a local mall. Featuring a sports slash joke apparel shop, multi-purpose gym, and a single automatic press in the back where they printed their stuff. To browser, let's call them Jake and Jarrett, own the company. Jake does most of the on-site management as Jarrett's more busy with the other carers. They are running a squeaky clean MNR diamond bag press. And the shop's super well organized. It is very climate control. Whereas my previous place was just a plain warehouse with no heat slash AC whatsoever, that would often surpass 100 degrees. Schedule is perfect, and paychecks are directly deposited every Friday too. Another huge plus. Obviously, I'm excited. First two weeks were fantastic. That second Friday, I got my first check. It seemed short, but... I started the mid-pay period doing sporadic hours, so whatever. One week later, and my next check is significantly larger. But it's off. I go to Jake and ask him about seeing my pay stops. He tells me that all of that is handled through an outside company, but Jared should have gotten my login information by then. He'll be back on Monday. I asked the other printer there if that was normal with the pay stops, and he said not really. But vouch for the two saying they probably just forgot. First thing Monday, I go to Jarrett and ask about the pay stops. Who tells me that's actually Jake's responsibility to make sure I get the information I need. Okay, what the hell. So I go back to him and ask him about it. And he says that he will call the company and get my login information as soon as possible. Suspicious but not having much other option... As I was already almost a month removed from my old job, I go to work. A little while later, he comes in and gives me the login information. We finish the job and take a quick break. I log in and check my pay stops. And it turns out these guys are paying me $8.10 an hour. Instead of the $13 I was promised. Oh man, I am livid. Obviously, I gotta confront Jake about this. Never been through this before, but I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here. I quickly Google conversation recording law, seeing Ohio is a one-party consent state, meaning if I'm part of a conversation I record, it is both legal and admissible in court. So I set my phone to do just that, put it in my pocket, and go confront the dude. Hey, so I checked my pay stops and you're only paying me $8 an hour. Would you like to tell me what's going on here? He looks kinda dumbfounded, shakes his head and says, Ah, uh, it's supposed to be $13 an hour. Well, you've been paying me $8.10. And you owe me over $400. Well, that's not supposed to happen. I will call them and see what's up. So I go back to the shop, stop the recording, and start setting up the next job to pass the time. I am holding out hope that this is all just a misunderstanding, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Regardless, I gotta at least play ball while I flow through. Jake comes in and says we'll have your money fixed on your next paycheck. I ask who's back pay, and he says yes, it'll be on the check. So I begrudgingly wait for next week. I woke up Friday morning and checked my bank account, and much to my not surprise at this point, Another minimum wage check 
and another few hundred dollars they owe me. So I decided to stay home that day. I get a text 15 minutes after the time I'm supposed to be there. Hey, this is Jake, what's going on? Well, you just sent me another minimum wage check. You owe me $700. I am not coming in until you pay me the money that you owe me. Well, I was going to write a check for the difference. But I accept your no call, no show. Thanks. That's not how this works, dude. You still owe me $700, and now I have this text from you admitting it. No more responses. So I do as any millennial would, and leave a negative review on their page and start commenting on every single post they have, which gets deleted immediately. I get a text from Jake saying that you will be hearing from my lawyer. Is your mother's address still correct? I never told him any personal details about family or living situations and this jerk was to assume while literally stealing what would be rent money. Cool, call them. They better have my check ready. The revenge. I had to do it cold. I basically have a concrete admission of guilt from text and audio evidence. And now I just gotta figure out what to do. I sent a message to a troubleshooter reporter who made his career exposing these exact kind of scams. And he tells me that without signing an employment contract, I'm pretty well screwed. And that maybe I can try small claims court, but that probably will not work out. And he apologized for being unable to help. I looked both Jared and Jake up in the local court of cleric websites just out of curiosity. And turns out, Jake's been sued multiple times for this exact thing. And he lost twice. And then it hits me. I'm in a band and have paid Facebook to promote post advertising my concerts before. It's cheap and it generally gets some results. At the time at least. I created a Craigslist post detailing this exact story. And I included links to this and the company's court records as a centerpiece. I make a page on Facebook called Former Employee and make one single post, avoid Waldron Sports Center slash apparel, dishonest employer. I then sponsor the post. I put in $15 over the course of 10 days for ads, and I targeted them directly to people who liked their page, any of our local sports team, screen printing or the mall itself who lived specifically within a few miles of their shop. Within a couple days, a post had been shared over 2,000 times. I got a message from him four days later begging me to take it down, and a check for every missing penny two days later. I went to the bank to cash it in, told the two cashiers at the counter the story. We shared a laugh because both of them had seen the post that morning. I sent him a message saying I got the money. Next time, do not try to scam somebody was much smarter than you. That felt really good. Pity, but, well, good. I continued to share my story anytime it was relevant to a public post. I guess he saw one a few months later message me again and said we already gave you the money. Please stop. I told him I gave you so many opportunities to do the right thing and you still went out of your way to be a jerk. You shouldn't have done that. Go screw yourself. And that felt even better. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.